What is road racing? Road racing is a form of motorsport racing held on paid road surfaces. The races can be held either on a closed circuit or on a street circuit, utilizing temporary closed public roads. In NASCAR, they race on short tracks, dirt tracks, intermediate tracks, super speedway tracks, and of course, road courses. However, before 1954, NASCAR raced on ovals only, especially the Daytona Beach. On June 13, 1954, NASCAR turned left and right for the very first time ever. However, the race was not on a road course track, it was not on a street race track. NASCAR's very first road race was on an airport in Linden, New Jersey. Here is the 18th installment of racing stories. This is the 1954 International 100, NASCAR's first ever road course race. The 1954 International 100 at the Linden Airport took place on June 13, 1954. It was the 18th race of the 1954 37 race season. The race was the very first NASCAR road course race ever held. Before we talk about that particular race, let's talk about the facility that they were racing on, the Linden Airport. The Linden Airport is a mile southeast of downtown Linden in Union County, New Jersey, also known as the Linden Municipal Airport. It is next to the U.S. Route 1 and 9. The National Plan of Integrated Airport Systems from 2011 to 2015 categorized it as a General Aviation Revealer Airport. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. I know I'm saying some of these wrong. The airport was also used during World War II. Before NASCAR raced at Linden, the SCCA raced at the facility. So there's your brief history of the Linden Airport as an airport facility and a temporary sports car racetrack. Now on to the International 100. 5,000 race fans attended the first ever NASCAR road course race at Linden, New Jersey. 43 cars started the race. Buck Baker started on the pole. His pole speed was an 80.536 miles per hour. It was a 50 lap race and it was a 100 mile race on a 2 mile temporary airport racing track. Buck Baker led the field down to the green and led the first 10 laps. On lap 11, Herb Thomas took the lead and led 2 laps. Meanwhile, according to Racing Reference race results, Jim Reed DNF due to tie rod issues. On lap 13, Buck Baker took back the lead. On the same lap, Herb Thomas took back the lead and led 8 more laps. On lap 23, Conrad Janis DNF due to mechanical issues. On the same lap, Al Keller took over the lead and would dominate the rest of the race. While Keller dominated the race, the number 206 car of Bill Chevalier, sorry if I butchered that name wrong, had wheel problems. Then on lap 37, Hershey McGriff crashed out of the race. After leading 28 laps, Al Keller would win the first ever NASCAR road course race at Linden Airport in his Jaguar. The win would be Keller's second and final victory in the NASCAR Cup Series. The race had two other different leaders. Pole sitter Buck Baker would lead 11 laps and Herb Thomas would also lead 11 laps. The race had four lead changes. Al Keller and Joe Eubanks would be the only two drivers who would finish on the lead lap. The race lasted 1 hour, 17 minutes, and 21 seconds with only four cautions. After the Linden Airport, NASCAR would race more road courses here and there from decades to come. Nowadays, as of 2021, the Cup Series has seven road courses, the Xfinity Series has seven road courses, and the Truck Series has four road courses. The main Archer and Menard Series have two road courses. NASCAR has come a long way on the road course side since racing at the Linden Airport. Personally, I want to see some more road courses added to the schedule for the top three NASCAR series and ARCA. The more road courses added, the more experience NASCAR drivers will gain while going left and right. The more road course ringers, the better the series and the better the drivers will be on road courses. Hell, we might even see a NASCAR street race in the future as well. Let's go. So stock car road course racing will grow from here on out. Personally, I just want to see some more road courses and short tracks and less big tracks and less two race days a year. We can have a perfectly balanced NASCAR schedule. Hey, that's just my take. I'm just some motorsports fan making videos about this and that's just my personal opinion. Hey everybody, if you guys have made it this far into this episode, a couple of things I want to say. If there's some information I had missed or got wrong, please feel free to respectfully tell me in the comments below. A lot of help would be appreciated. If you or anybody you knew someone, or if you knew someone who attended that particular race, please feel free to tell me in the comments below. 
Also, if you're enjoying this episode, if you want to see some more racing stories, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more content and more episodes of Racing Stories. Thank you guys so much for listening. Enjoy the remainder of this episode. So after the 1954 International 100, a foreign manufacturer did not win a NASCAR race until Toyota got their first win in the NASCAR Truck Series thanks to Travis Qualfold in 2004. Jason Leffler would become the first driver in the NASCAR Busch Series to win in Toyota. In 2007 at the Indianapolis Raceway Park, Kyle Busch brought home Toyota's very first cup win. At Atlanta in 2008, that was a foreign manufacturer's first cup win in 54 years. To this day, Toyota is still the only manufacturer in NASCAR and ARCA actively. After NASCAR never came back to the Linden Airport facility, drag racing was held in 1955. To this day, the Linden Airport is still open. After Al Keller won at Linden, he would go IndyCar racing until his death at the Arizona State Fairground track. Al Keller was 41 years old. So that's going to do it for another episode of Racing Stories. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Stories. Comment, like, and subscribe for more content and for more episodes of Racing Stories. Follow my social media accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notification bells for more content. Thank you guys so much for supporting E-Nation. This is Ian Press 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.